Welcome to an introduction to cash flow. Uh, we'll be talking about income and profit versus cash flow. And then I'm going to go through a multi-step example um, where we derive the cash flow uh, using an income statement and slowly add things to it, which uh, will allow us to see how the income statement and the balance sheet play into making an indirect cash flow statement. So due to accrual accounting, the income on a company's income statement, the income shown there, is not the same thing as the cash flow, as we know. So if we were to have an income of $250,000, what does that mean in terms of increase in cash? It could be $250,000, more likely it isn't. One thing would be, as an example, if the company earns $250,000 and has a cash flow of $250,000, then what happens if the company takes a profit and buys a machine for $100,000? Well, the cash would be reduced, of course, by the amount uh, of that purchase, and an asset will be increased in, in uh, conjunction with that. So from a balance sheet point of view, you'd have cash going down by $100,000, you'd have uh, a fixed asset or of, of the machine or the equipment going up by 1000 So it does affect cash flow, but as you'll notice, there's nothing will happen on the income statement. If you buy an asset, nothing happens to your income statement. So that's the issue we're talking about here. So income and cash flow can diverge. So let's start with a simple business. You start investing uh, by investing 4000 in a company in exchange for equity in that company. So the initial balance sheet would just be the assets on the one side, which is cash, liabilities, and equity. There's no liability, there's just equity, 4000 Now let's say you buy and sell things for double the price. And in the first year, you buy $5,000 worth of goods and you sell them for $10,000. We're making a very simple income statement. We're not going to assume any kind of taxes or anything of that sort. So if everything goes according to that plan, we have $10,000 of revenues and $5,000 cost of goods sold, and we earn a net income of 5,000. As you can see, the cash flow would look the same. And what would happen with the balance sheet? We would have an increase of, through the profit of $5,000, we would now have $5,000 more than our initial amount, which was $4,000. So here we have the $9,000 in cash, and on the liabilities and equity side, we also have $9,000. We have our initial paid in capital, our initial stock, and we now have $5,000 of retained earnings. The cash flow, as I mentioned, is the same as the net income. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some more complicating factors here. The base uh, income statement will not change because we're, in all cases, looking at selling $5,000 worth of goods, of inventory, for $10,000. However, now in this case, instead of uh, $5,000, purchasing $5,000 worth of goods, we've purchased now $5,500 worth of goods instead of the $5,000. So our income statement, as I mentioned, would be the same. Sales, cost of goods sold, that's fine. But now on the balance sheet, we will we'll have earned $5,000 extra in, uh, on top of what we had before, um, what we started the year with, rather. But now we've spent an extra $500 in goods, which we haven't sold yet. So they will be in our balance sheet as inventory. And in exchange for that, we'll have $500 less of cash. So we're going to have, as you see, the $8,500 worth of cash and the $500 of inventory. So that's $9,000. So that's the same total as we had before, but in the last case, we had $9,000 only cash, no inventory. As you can see on this side, the liability side, it's the same. We have our paid in capital and our retained earnings, which is the profits for the year. So we have 9,000. But now the cash flow will show, well, the cash flow, as we can see, has to be 
4,500 because we started the year with 4,000 and now we've gained 4,500. How is that calculated? We take the net income and the increase in inventory is a has a negative effect on our cash status. And our, inc our inventory went from zero to 500, so it's minus 500. That gives us our cash flow. Throwing another additional factor in, let's assume that one of the customers didn't pay. And so the item is uh, that for an uh, item sold for $1,000. Again, we'll see that the income statement will look the same. Now, since we haven't received the cash from a customer, that would mean we have another $1,000 less of cash, but instead we have, well, an accounts receivable that we're expecting the cash in the future period. So as you can see here, the cash is now not 8,500. We already had 500 less from the initial 9,000 because of the inventory. Now we also have 1,000 less from the accounts receivable. But our total again is still 9,000 and nothing has happened on our liability side of the balance sheet. So our cash flow, again, we know this, the answer here. The cash flow went from 4,000 to 7,500. So it's gone up 3,500. That is comprised. Now using the indirect cash flow statement, we start with the net income. And then we look at the change here into networking capital on the asset side, the current assets of inventory have gone up by 500 and now also the accounts receivable has increased by 1000 went from 0 to 1000 and that increase in a current asset is a negative on the cash flow so now that gives us our 3500 now we're going to add another twist at the end of the year now let's assume that that the company has not paid one of the suppliers $750 worth of purchased goods. So what does that mean? Again, the income statement, we can skip right over that. It's going to be the same. We have profits of 5000 The balance sheet, however, will show that we owe a supplier. So that's going to be a current liability, accounts payable, of $750 for purchased goods. But because we haven't paid the supplier, and that amount of is, is already in the income statement as an expense, we're actually looking at $750 worth of cash that hasn't yet been laid out. So we're going to have $750 more than we did in the previous example. So the balance sheet will look like this. $8,250, we had of course $7,500 last time. Now we have $750 more here in cash. We still have the accounts receivable and in the inventory from the previous two examples. And now we have accounts payable on the liability side. We, we owe $750 to our uh, supplier. This has now increased our total balance sheet sum. We now have in, we're now at seven, 9750 instead of the 9000 that we had beforehand because our liability side has increased by 750 Now the cash flow should show again that increase from 4000 to 8250 so that's 4250 and that's what we have. We're again going the, uh, the indirect method. So net income, 5,000. Now the increase in the two current asset accounts shows the negative number or the, reduces our cash flow. And the increase in the liability account increases our cash flow. So we have 750. Now it sometimes seems a bit confusing, but 700, because well, 750 means we owe it. Well, that means in the future, yes, we'll have to pay it. But because we have gained something for that 750, we gained the asset called inventory from which we gained some profit. We're actually, that has increased our present period cash flow by that 750. In the future, of course, we're going to have to pay it. So it seems a bit confusing, but that's how it works. So the change in networking capital, that's basically assets minus liabilities. If you're not used to that term right now, that's not a big deal. But changes in assets, increases in assets are a negative factor to the cash flow and increases in liabilities are a positive. Of course, vice versa as well. In other words, if we had decreases in current assets, we'd have an increase in cash flow and decreases in liabilities would be 
an increase in cash flow. Uh, sorry, a decrease in cash flow. Now, finally, let's try an assumption that in this case here that this business bought a computer at the beginning of the year, and it cost two thousand four hundred dollars. Now, you expect to be able to use it. For computer for three years after which it will have no salvage value it needs to be replaced so let's look at the balance sheet right after purchasing the computer recall our initial balance sheet which would be let's say December 31st of the previous year was 4,000 cash and 4,000 equity now at the beginning of our year we've bought the computer which means our cash will go down and in exchange we're going to have an asset the computer the fixed asset 2400 so our cash is 1600 fixed asset 2400 and nothing's changed on the liability side now because we're assuming it's going to be uh, losing its value in three years and for the purposes of this example we're going to go with straight line depreciation and that would be 2400 over three so just keep that in mind eight hundred dollars would be our depreciation value so at the end of the year, our income statement will look different because it will reflect the depreciation. So we have $800 of depreciation, giving us a net income of $4,200. Now the balance sheet, I'm going to walk through each of the steps to show the differences. We'll deal with the cash later. But we have an accounts receivable and inventory and accounts payable from the as in the previous examples the paid in capital is the same now the retained earnings is 4200 instead of 5000 because of our depreciation so our, our net income has gone down we have now also a fixed asset now the computer is no longer 2400 we have accumulated depreciation on that and that's why it's gone from 2400 down by the 800 yielding 1600 so the cash flow we knew uh, from the last example, we're going to separate it out. We have the cash flow from operations, which again shows exactly the same thing as the last example. But now we have cash flow coming from investment. And we spent $2,400 on investing. So the cash flow from investing is, uh, is, is minus 2400 because cash flow went out. So we total the cash flow from operation, uh, operations, cash flow from investing. That gives us our total cash flow. Just for your information, we, of course, don't have any cash flow from financing. So these two together yield the total cash flow, which is 1850 And to check, we started the year with the 4000 We have a cash flow of 1850 so that gives us the ending cash flow of 5850 So it works. So thanks for your attention. The goal here was to give a bit of an insight into how the uh, indirect cash flow statement worked and why it works as it does. And I hope that works. So thanks again.